It's a beautiful night here in Paris, France, where today the 2015 League of Legends World Championship kicked off as the 16 best teams from around the globe converged on the City of Lights. Uh, well, it's been fantastic, fantastic first day, and we're here to talk about it a little more. I'm Efe Shogzaporter, joined here by Freak and the Fisho. A good day, and in terms of LCS teams winning, you guys are up front, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, NALCS 2-0, EU LCS 1-1. One one. I mean... And a greater than EU could completely confirm statistically significant everything different. Can we now yeah. never bring it up again? <laughs> I mean, we only beat IG. I say we. Fnatic beat IG. We mm -hmm. didn't do anything. You beat a number three seed. We beat a number two seed. I mean, it just. We can talk about it a little more yeah. later. <laughs> but we're going to take a look back at the opening ceremony from this morning is when everything kicked off here in Paris. Of course, all the players taking to the stage for the very first time. Faker, of course, the former champion there. Fnatic, who are the fan favorites, and we heard it in here. Some newbies like Huni, like Rainover taking the stage. Uh, it was some good stuff. Yeah, honestly, it was cool to see, like, the different players that got cheered, like obviously Soaz got some cheers, you even heard some from Diud as well, but like Faker comes out and there's like a Faker chant from the French crowd here. It's, it's really cool to see uh, sort of the individual stars get celebrated. I think overall though, the French crowd, when it comes to just seeing good plays in-game, it doesn't matter who's doing it, they go crazy. Bangkok Titans, when they were so far down against EDG, they were still cheering for them, and that's what you want. Yeah, definitely. And we did see some good plays, and it started off with Fnatic versus IG straight off the bat. What a matchup there in Group B. All the analysts on the analyst desk called it for Fnatic. We obviously had a gut feeling, but it was incredibly convincing, which is something I hadn't expected. Yeah, a little bit more one-sided than expected, but IG is a team that's very much night and day. You know, very high highs, very low lows, where Fnatic has been more consistent in their performance. But overall in this game, pick and ban phase, I felt like Fnatic, especially with the last two picks, like Hecarim and Azir coming in, really managed to counterpick the composition we saw from IG. And then also, IG looks so lost in the lane swap from where they were sending Kid and Kitties, you know, where Zitai was running, and Fnatic was just one step ahead, and that allowed them to take full control of the map early on. Yeah, and from that lead as well, they just kept the lanes pressured up, a lot of little things like the AD carry recall timings, BF Sword versus Pickaxe, and Kid had to do it because he was already behind, and things like this, Fnatic were winning basically every single lane, and from there, they got to pick which lanes they dived, where they went to, you got a Sivir to lead them in, and all of this just worked to Fnatic's favor. And I think this game is just so important for Fnatic now, we were a little bit worried looking at being like, okay, the first game is potentially against the best team in the group. So if Fnatic loses, what's the mentality going to be like? We have seen him as a team. Someone like Huni, he needs to have a good start to a tournament to really do well. So beating IG first is so key for this team going forward because they're obviously aiming for 6-0 in this group. Yeah, they are. And a couple of question marks we had about Fnatic maybe coming in was their early game and possibly rain over in the jungle. He did fantastic on Elise, and I think they did right by prioritizing that pick for him. Well, that was the interesting thing is you have uh, Kakao, who's, uh, you know, kind of putting the name as like, a lot of people consider him the best jungler in the world, and he played a farm till six, do nothing champion. And when every single lane is winning for Fnatic, that's not a good style. This Skarner was invisible. All you saw of him was his spires getting captured by Fnatic, and rain over was in the right place at the right time, got Huni the turret kill. You did enough. Riven, and then a jungler who cannot impact the map before level six, and also give the chance for Fnatic to counter pick with like a Zia, block the wall. Skana needs to have flash every single time. And even if he has flash, if you fail that one, we saw it near the Baron, you could just get bounced back. Impossible game for Kakao to really have much of an impact. And then again, with a failed lane swap from them, and this combo just fell apart. IG looked like a team we have seen a few times in the LPL, where they simply don't show up. I'm not worried though, I think tomorrow they're going to bounce back big time. Yeah, we know how inconsistent they are and we know that they have very high highs when it comes to it as well. And from the side of Fnatic, if you look at the rest of the group, I talked to them after the game. Um, we have some teams here like CLG who are very clear about, you know, we can know it all the way. Fnatic though, when I asked Yellow Star, he was tempered in it as well. And just saying, yeah, we'll Always. see. We'll start looking at the group. Do you think that's the right mindset for them? Because they arguably have the highest pressure of Europe and maybe the West on their shoulders. Fnatic as a team, all season long, all the way back into spring split. They're like, you know, one game at a time. We got to just get some synergy going with this new lineup. It worked for them. They got to MSI. Even after beating SKT, it wasn't, oh, great, man. We, we are awesome. It was like, okay, okay. We have a lot of things to work on. We can become a great team. Now they win the first game in the groups and they're still saying, next game, you know, one game at a time. That's yeah. the right mentality. There's no reason to go out and say you're going to win Worlds. I mean, show it. 
then okay, you can talk about it. And I'm actually really glad they dropped two games to Origin in the finals there in the European LCS. Just to prove real quick before World starts, look, you guys are mortal. You nearly lost that series when you hadn't lost to them all, all year long, essentially. So that was a good gut check for them. And, and again, as you specifically asked, one game at a time, I think that is the right way to go about it. That's all you can ever do anyway. And it seems like they got good heads in their shoulders. Yeah, the only cockiness came out of when you were was like, I was actually a better <laughs> Riven, but maybe we'll see that later. Uh, another guy who shined in that matchup was, of course, Febivan, of, of course, as well. And Pyrotechnus caught up with him a little earlier to talk about that game versus IG. But I want to ask you a little bit about your preparation for IG because you guys made that game, frankly, look easy. Uh, yeah, our pr preparation was really good because we would come in Korea for one month and we had really good practice there. We improved a ton. And we really didn't know what to expect from IG, even though we we heard that they were a really strong Chinese team, but we never practiced against them, so they didn't really look that strong in this game. But I think I'm, I'm pretty sure they will look strong uh, throughout the tournament. Throughout the tournament, we'll have to see what goes on with them, and of course for you guys as well. Well, yes, Febivan actually echoing what you said there. It's not because of this first loss that IG is out. He also thinks that they'll be able to show a bit more. Let's move on to our next matchup in Group B because we had Cloud9 versus AHQ up next. Uh, Cloud9, an underdog in that position versus the LMS champion, which is a rare sight, and they turned it around. There were three grown men on the caster desk in this pick and ban phase screaming <laughs> like little girls who just got the perfect Christmas gift. When we saw the Vagar coming in, and we just saw the even the Darius from AHQ and so on. Like there were so many of these picks we were hoping to see. And Incarnation just showed up big time. This siege comp they were running, AHQ as well, put themselves in a situation where they had such a risky composition. If they started falling behind and didn't completely snowball from the start, Cloud9 would just group up and start taking towers. So Freak asked, watching Cloud9, uh, well, the whole summer split, what was the biggest difference for you in the team that you saw playing today? Uh, honestly, this team looked like the team that was there running through the gauntlet. Like, this team took so long to gel. Incarnation was a miserable mid lane at the very beginning. He got good by the very end there. Sneaky got back to his old form as well. And honestly, C9, by the time they were good, was actually very, very good early game. They're so good at closing these games out. And so Sneaky on the Tristana able to push Tourette's down. Incarnation splitting from with Westor and then team fighting really well. That's how this team seems to work. And High Shot called the team around. 25 minute win, of course. Very impressive by these Let's guys. Talk about the Vagar. I mean, <laughs> it's been one of these picks, a lot of people were talking about it, Froggen has been spamming it in solo queue and now more and more players are doing it. And everyone is saying, this is a pick, if you do not shut it down in the early game, it would just snowball completely out of control. The way you can stack your AP, the one you have 1.0 AP ratios on two abilities and you have a massive AOE stun. Like there's so many things where you look at a champion and think, this is too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's just been, you know, so far down the list and he's slowly been getting some buffs here and there. Now the teams are starting to play it. We saw the power of it with Tristana. I gotta give credit to Sneaky, the way him and Elimination played the early game against the Kalista, won that lane, that's what allowed Cloud9 to start snowballing from there, get a tower, get deep vision against Rengar, and then start sieging with Incarnation, who then landed stun after stun. Yeah, and there were some specific, actually, interactions with Vagar that's actually important against the comp they are versus. Uh, the, the cage actually stops dashes. If you're going to jump through it, you're going to get stopped. So that affects Kalista, that affects Braum, that affects Fizz, that affects... Rengar. R yeah, Rengar ult, like, literally just like won't reach mm -hmm. people now. You have to set it up, but like when you see the explanation point, you put a cage down, Rengar will not reach your carries anymore. These are all very big deals, and... Uh, that may have been part of the reason he got it picked, but you know, I think it's certainly a strong champion. I want to see how it plays out the rest of Worlds because he's an interesting pick and uh, you know, a slow, immobile mage whose damage is inconsistent, mostly skill shot based. Yeah, you know, setup CC might be very important. Well, one shot, one shot, and not just that. In the first two games, we saw 20 unique champion picks, and it was beforehand we were theorizing, okay, what's gonna come out, and then some awesome things. Fiora left open for the first two, and then it came out. We had the Darius, we had the Gangplug, of course, we'd seen that before. We had the Vega, we had the Skarner. What was the most cool one for you guys? <laughs> uh, Vega for sure, yeah. for me. Okay. I mean, it was just such a hyped up pick, and we didn't know if it was for real. Like, it was just for solo queue for now, were teams confident in pulling it out? and C9 does it, and it was even banned late on as well. I'm just so happy that we were sitting and talking before this tournament started, being like, okay, there are so many viable picks. What do we expect in a pick and ban phase? And a lot of these picks we talked about were in the pick and bans, just obviously two different games, and there was such a mix of it. I mean, it seems like you can play every single style right now in every single role. Do you want an aggressive uh, jungler? Go like Lee Sin and Lee's, whatever. Do you want more team fight? Go for the Gragas scanner, and so on and so on. We also saw how it influenced the group sta uh, standings for Group B at the yeah. end. 1-0 for Fnatic and Cloud9, and then Invictus Gaming and HQ to trail. But 
uh, both teams that have potential, especially IG, we think could reach some higher highs. Right, one game in, I mean, C9 is obviously the one big upset. The yep. fact that they're winning here, many, many people had them pegged as the number four team in this group. They can, of course, still happen that way. They could still go one and five the dream. But just the fact that they've got uh, <laughs> at least this this level of a star and, and this kind of dominant of a game, like the players who were good were still on form. Ball still lost lane, but he got to benefit from the rest of his team creating pressure to catch back up. Like C9 right now, honestly, is functioning as expected coming right out of the gauntlet from NA. I think we just have to say it's game one. Yeah, of yeah. course. So, hey, it's day one. We got to see some cool things. We're going to see teams now go back and adjust. If there was something they didn't like in the pick and ban phase, if they made a big mistake in the early game, they're going to try and fix it. Maybe not for tomorrow, but then at least the further we get into the group stage. Every single window really counts. When there's four teams, you only face each other twice, and it's just about getting out of groups at the moment. Yeah, and Fnatic uh, and C9 was that two huge victories for them. Let's look at Group C. Let's touch on that, because there it was pretty much business as expected. SKT trumping H2K and EDG over BKT. I want to touch on SKT versus H2K, though. So was it more H2K showing up more than we had expected, or was it SKT playing a little bit worse than we had expected? I think H2K did exactly what we expect. All right. It was the same kind of playstyle, same kind of comp. They even went a few patches back and went like for the old Sivir composition, Gragas for Lulex. It was very simple. It was the same, getting set up Tower Dice with Lulex here. SKT just respected them. And they said, you know what? We're not going to try and risk anything. We're just going to play it fairly safe because we know we're going to outscale you and we know we have the advantage in terms of pushing the lanes with like a Z and Fiora. So that was what they played around. Gave a few openings to H2K, but they didn't really grab them, and that's why SKT won the game. Yeah, I agree with you that it kind of went business as usual, right? The H2K have a very good rehearsed lane swap game. In fact, I think throughout the day we kind of saw that one of the storylines I cared about was the Western style of lane swaps where you set up the 4v1 turret dive versus the Eastern style where you tend to like TP to lane and farm and no one touches you. The Western lane swaps are tend to be winning. Those tend to work better for the NA and EU LCS teams. You yeah, giggle? Today. But you giggle? No, you not yeah, agree? I agree 100%. Okay. I, mean, no, like, I agree 100%. It, that's what we've shown so far. So if that changes, that changes. That's what we've seen so far. Um, and H2K, right, in the first 15 to 20 minutes, have a good playbook to run from. And then they adapted very poorly to the one team fight where they fed Mar in a bunch of kills. Then he <laughs> took off and the game was over. And, and as much as people like to give H2K a lot of credit for this one, as you said, it's business as usual, yeah. SKT starts actually playing the game 15 to 20 minutes into the game. They don't make a lot of big individual plays. They play for the Dragons, and then if they get control, they take Baron and they win the game, and that's exactly what happened. This was like the standard SKT LCK game, essentially. And there were some good things for SKT. Um, question mark was like Marin coming into the tournament. Was he going to just keep playing tanks up top lane? What could he do on Fiora and so on? He showed up big time, oh. fantastic team fight. Uh, from him and just becoming the big carry. And that was important because Faker didn't have the greatest game of his life. Uh, Ryu tried his best to try and get a yeah. few solo kills. Hey, got he one. Did didn't need the rest of his team to help though, but he got one kill. Yeah, he did. Uh, H2K, I think they can still alter some things and, and maybe get a victory here in this group if uh, things go correctly because we saw the Bangkok Titans, of course, showing up versus EDG. Yeah. That didn't work out too good, so we'll see how this group evolves. Let's touch finally on Group A, though. CLG, with all the faith, uh, up against the Flash Wolves, and what a tough game that turned out to be for them, even if they had all the power picks they wanted. Yeah, CLG, their team comp looked good, and in fact, if you watch the laning phase itself, you would feel like their players looked better. They were winning in farm pretty much throughout the game, but Flash Wolves did such a good job of their early ganks. Karsa was Awesome stake, I think, overperformed, especially once the ganks came through. And that part of Flash Wolves was great. Maple was also incredible. He zoned out the backline by himself many, many times, just enough time to kill off Zion Spartan, then ult back out. But CLG's comp was too good to fail. Like, they had to screw up massively many times to lose the game, and that didn't happen. It was really weird because... It almost happened, though. It almost happened, sure. exactly. <laughs> like, at first... I was looking at being like, okay, there's a Lulu who's going to buff up the Jinx. I don't think Flash Wolves can kill this Jinx here in the back line. So as long as CLG just played safe and, you know, siege on these towers here, protect double lift, this game is won. Then they mess up a few times. Flash Wolves get in the lead Vision and get control. the Baron. You know, Division Control wasn't there. And suddenly it was like, okay, Flash Wolves, they shouldn't be able to lose this game now. And it makes some super greedy plays, like with a TP back with their uh, Echo ulti and then going to a fight after and Kramer. This guy, man, he's going to look back at this game and be so annoyed because he got caught out by X Smithy a few times with the cocoons. He had Flash yeah. ready. He could have jumped out. And he was basically the reason Flash will end up losing in the end. But also credit to X Smithy for landing those because he had a very good performance at least near the end game. Yeah, that sub coming in there and uh, not too good for Flash Wolves need to uh, revise his performance finally. Last thing to touch on in that group was Pain Gaming versus the Ku Tigers. Um, Monty said, I want to see what Pain can do if they don't get that. 
Level one, actually, they did give up two kills, and I actually think that I saw a lot of individual mistakes coming from Pain, and if they can overcome that, it might go better. Yeah, so, yeah, as you mentioned, level one, obviously good for Pain. Uh, they, again, played the Western lane swap versus Eastern lane swap game better. Smeb going into lanes where every Western top leader knows he's going to get 4v1'd. <laughs> Lo and behold, gets 4v1, dies a whole bunch, gives up turrets. Like Should've this is died more. Well, mm. sure, probably should have. Pain was like a little bit slow to a couple of these dives. There was one they chased the Lee Sin through the jungle. <laughs> they're just pushing the damn turret down. So like you were seeing those misplays. And and also, uh, Dude honestly had some really questionable choices. Even in level one, he could have gotten like a five-man pulverize and just like did a late two-man pulverize instead. Maybe jitters here. He went for some big crowd. flash yeah. engages that like had no teammates around. And uh, honestly, like you, you can harp on Pain Gaming, but essentially like Ku are a much better team player for player, and it showed. Ku should be the favorites to get out of the group as number one. Especially after that CLG it's game. For yeah. sure. And that's also why for, for Pain Gaming, the fact they played out the early game fairly well with the lane swap, looked like they knew exactly what was going to happen, at least the first few steps. And then sometimes they were like, again, as you said, overchase, maybe make the wrong decision. It does seem to me that if Flash Wolves or CLG has a bad game, against Pain Gaming, they can lose, for sure. And then suddenly you have this group here where multiple teams can take games from each other. I still do think, though, Pain Gaming, um, they're going to look for the win. I'm not sure they're going to get it. Well, uh, to summarize what you began with, we saw, we see, we have seen, rather, a lot today, but it was only day one, and everything continues tomorrow. Let's take a look at that schedule to see what we have there. We're going to dive into Group D, of course. We haven't seen any of those teams play yet. I'm going to start off with KT Rollster versus TSM. LGD will face off against Origin, and the Bangkok, Bangkok Titans will challenge SK Telecom. That'll be quite a rough game for them as well. It hits your streams tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central European Summertime, 7 a.m. Pacific. That is actually the same as it was today, so nothing changes for tomorrow. And that's all from us here. Thank you guys very much for joining me to wrap up the day. We're going to sign off here from Worlds tonight and we'll see you tomorrow. Au revoir. Au revoir. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get back onto the rift for game one of the group stages in a dark performance. They turn their focus to Kakao. There's the team fight. On sorts of shadows, throws IG's backline. Zatai's forced to retreat. That's a defensive flash. Emperor's Divide will not pin Kakao to the wall. It's a battle on three fronts and it's a battle that Fnatic is winning. And the hometown heroes strike first blood. No, 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 SKT are on the board, 1-0 in the group stages. Not allowed to give up. You cannot say, I hate this game if the game is 1-5. No tilting allowed. Here comes the dive play, back there, Wallet getting low, Mako, he's in trouble, he flashes out for death, he's getting a first blood, that's a double kill. EDG in style take their first game here in Paris.